Hey, welcome back to Let's Play Rhyme. I was just uh, checking out the extras in between episodes I tend to do. I try to get my uh, bearings on things going on. Right now I'm getting 15 frames a second <laughs> in the pause menu. Good God. So I was just looking through the extras. It seems that some of the things we were finding... Emblems... Oh, this is going to be a fox emblem, huh? Lullaby, remember that conch shell we found ages ago, I guess? Why a lullaby of all things? Is this a, a dream time story? Or is this like a story being told to a child? That would that would be very disappointing, truth be told. I believe the correct way moving forward is downwards. Don't die. I like that there's multiple animations for different uh, stumbling. That's a nice detail. I guess X? So I guess X is the catch all interact button. Let me like go over it. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just doing the one thing I know how to do. It looks like I can actually climb. Do a running wall jump. <laughs> I... Right. Oh, oh, I meant to hit this side first. Gotcha. I knew that. Anyways, back to these, this Fox conversation I was having last episode, which for most people, if you're up to date on the channel, I guess, if you watch daily, you can jump. That's sweet. Totally like Ico, totally like, totally like Shadow of the Colossus. So like the whole day after I last, last spoke about it, unless you're binging, which thank you for binging, I do appreciate it. <laughs> it makes me feel really nice when I suddenly see in my analytics something like 20 views in a single day. I'm like, oh, hey, that's a good feeling. Someone's binging my stuff. It means they like it. Oh, this is going to be an interesting uh, perspective puzzle. I do sincerely hope there's more different, uh, more variety in puzzles, I think. How exactly does that work? Am I actually sliding the podium around or am I just rotating it? Because it, it's... The perspective puzzle works by ro by transformation, not rotation, so it looks a bit funky. Let's see if I can get this right. Will it... You know, if I just slide it in front... No, 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 I need, I need to move it closer, don't I? Probably under here is... Is that effective enough? This might work, let's give that a go. So the changes that were noticed in foxes were... After, I think, only three or four generations, suddenly, they started getting super, super friendly. Uncharacteristically friendly. Okay, I need to move the left... It looks like I need, I need to move the left block all the way up to the edge. Oh, there's even a mark on the floor. How obvious. Let me put that there. Center it up. Let's go. And so suddenly, these foxes, they started developing things like floppy ears, different fur shades, different colors of fur. They started getting curly tails. They started learning to bark and yelp. They started licking and they started um, begging for human contact. And this was only after something like three or four generations. It was really, really quick of just breeding the friendliest foxes, which is very alarming. What's alarming is not how quick it happened, but the features that suddenly came out of the breeding. Because typically, whenever people ask, oh, why do foxes have fluffy tails? Why do foxes have uh, curvy ears and floppy ears and stuff like that? And the answer is normally, it's because humans find it cute and humans bred that into their animals because that's what they like. Was I... Hold on. What is this good for? <laughs> It seemed a bit... Oh, you know what? Maybe you meant to shout at this thing. Ah! Well... Oh, okay, you know what? You probably shout at a lot of the things. So the answer, or the, the traditional uh, accepted answer had always been, ah! it's because humans bred these features into dogs because that's what we think is cute. Turns out... It's the other way around. Just breeding based on friendliness introduces these these genes. There's a like a there's a whole locus or a loci of genes which work which coexist. That humans tend Hold on, keep that there for a minute. Which humans seemingly find cute, but it's it's the other way around. It's it's interesting. It it's like this reverse causality that we never even realized. So this one is you know what? That looks right so far. I'm missing one piece. Which looks like... Okay. Wait, sorry. No, no. They tilt to the left. 
Dang it. Yeah, truth be told, I think I like far lone sales a lot better than this game. It, uh, in terms of, not functionality, but in terms of uh, performance, it felt better. It also controlled better and stuff. This game is just kind of a little bit frustrating for me. I didn't even realize that this here was an option. Let's give this a look. But then again, this is just an opinion. That's half a door, that's not... Oh! Interesting! Oh, hey! Suddenly, my world has expanded. That's, that's cool. I didn't realize such a thing would happen. And of course, I realize there's that door-shaped hole just there, which might open, hopefully. It probably leads back to that that other, that weed block that I could rotate, uh, that I could move around, but for some reason had no impact on the game. Oops, sorry about that. This game also gives me oddly Legend of Zelda vibes. I guess it's just the the rudimentary puzzles. What what 3D puzzle platformer game has the best puzzles? I wonder. I might need to ask that on a subreddit or something. Oh hey, Mr. Foxman. Hey, and there's that dude in the- It reminds me of Journey. I've never played Journey. I want to play Journey. I did watch a GTC talk about Journey on how to make a good controlling camera and oh, like 50 things to make a good camera. And it was a good- Shit. <laughs> it was a really good car- a really good um, talk. It was also interesting. Some things I didn't agree with. For example, changing field of view when you look upwards. Was this made by the same people who made Journey? Because in Journey, if you look up, the field of view changes, sort of like what it does in this game. Because the the argument being, there's functionality to it. When you look up, you're presumably trying to look up to the sky or trying to look up to a large, taller building. Ha ha. No, shout, you dingus. Shout. Okay. I didn't realize there were these lights over here earlier. Consider it lucky I spotted them now. Because if you're looking up, you're presumably either trying to look up a, a tall skyscraper or maybe trying to look up at the sky or trying to look up... or trying to forge a path or something. So increasing field of view is perfectly functional. And I think, yeah, that's a fair argument. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it one bit. It, it takes me... Honestly, it breaks my immersion from a game when a camera has... when control is taken away from me and my camera. So I don't like it. For example, in the same Journey GDC talk, the, the guy, the developer talked about, huh, that's an interesting hole all the way over there. Uh, talked about how, for example, if I run to the left, you'll see the camera tries to rotate to me and tries to get behind me. I don't like that. I wish the camera would just stay still. Oftentimes I'm trying to look at something to the side. Like I'll be trying to look at that lizard, that red lizard in my head and the camera just, oh no, the camera's actually, no, see now it's rotating and I have to manually try and stabilize it myself. And that's annoying. Let me just look at the damn thing or at least give me a setting to turn that on and off. Thank you, Nier Automata, for doing that. But at the same time, normally, mm, there's a trade-off. Having a high level of uh, customization, cool as it may be and as friendly and customer uh, as, what's the word, consumer friendly as that is, sometimes I can imagine, I can see that undermining elements of the game. For example, if you have a no clip option in your camera controls, like for example, if I walk towards this wall now, it actually, the camera doesn't move backwards. The camera stays still because there's a wall in the way. Or if I try to rotate my camera around this block, what should happen is it should suddenly zoom in. No, actually that's okay. That's well-made camera. Nice. But if I try to move it into this wall, for example, the camera will move in closer because there's a wall in the way. Uh, that's good. I think that's a good, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's acceptable. Uh, that said, imagine if you decide, I'm not sure if people like it. Let's see if I can maybe make a no clip mode for it. That could break the game. That could let you see secrets and stuff. Or maybe being able to customize how close or far away the camera is. Maybe in a game like, say, Dark Souls, where the level design is really tight and oftentimes it it bases a lot of its level design off ambushes. Giving you this option to zoom the camera out and actually peek around corners could really, really ruin some surprises that were really important to the game. So it's... It, it, uh, Developers are kind of at like a, at this crossroads, at these two conflicting ideas or ideals. 
they on the one hand they should be free to do what they wish with the game and how they want to do it but at the same time they should allow players to enjoy the game as they want it and hold on mark brown did a video on this didn't he ah oh, dang it <laughs> I pride myself on coming up with ideas better <laughs> first before Mark Brown. Like this idea of timers. I talk about it in my Wario Land. I saw this person move to the left. If you pray to the to the tower, I see. I, in my Wario Land four let's play, I talk about timers and the importance of hard timers and soft timers and how soft timers are better than hard timers because they give incentive as opposed to a game over condition or something to that effect. Though that said, hard timers do have their places. Things like, for example, MMOs. I just like that in a lot of MMOs, your abilities are tied to a timer. You use, a, you use your ability as, oh, I guess more mainstream would be something like Overwatch. You use an ability and, and you have to wait five seconds before you can use it again. I find that's a very inelegant solution compared to something, say, as having a mana bar or some kind of resource that you have to manage that because okay i find the timers are very arbitrary you have to tune them to work right i'd prefer if they were connected to a resource and said resource is managing this resource is then determines how you use it kind of thing but then there's just an arbitrary level the arbitrary level gets shifted away from the timer and more and close and to the point of okay so how much of this resource does it use how does this resource uh how does it replenish and such and that becomes arbitrary in and of itself so i realize it's just an exercise in game design see like for example this is an example of where looking up the field of view increases because obviously you're looking up you want to see the whole thing i, I don't like it i really really don't like it don't touch my field of view game uh, okay what do you do you creepy baby i hear the fox bark foxes don't bark Un unless you're a, uh, you're a fox that's been, hey buddy, unless you're a fox that's been, uh, domesticated by Dmitry Belyev. I see there's that mega baby jelly statue. First, let me deal with these guys. I want to grow out the tree, presumably, because there's the tree trunk there and it's got to grow something. It's just... I, I don't like it when games are very predictable. If a game is, if something is predictable, I then I sort of inherently, I, I'd argue it's only fair that I dock points off the quality if it's predictable. The only um, instances... Hold on, are they based on a timer? It looks like they are. Okay, good to know. The only time I think it's acceptable is in something like, say, a movie like... I haven't seen it, but I suspect Pacific Rim is this way. It's just meant to be a very basic action movie with all the action movie tropes. But, and it's supposed to be awesome. So it's supposed to be predictable. It's supposed to have the normal twists and turns and everything that makes action movies so predictable. But it's done, it's executed so well that it's just plain awesome kind of thing. Don't take control of the camera away from me, game. Oh. Oh, Droid. <laughs> you can tell I'm not taking this game very seriously. I'm sorry, game designers. I'll respect your game a little more, a little bit more now. This might be made by the developers of Journey based solely on how the camera controls. <laughs> I haven't played the game, I've just watched the GDC talk on how to make camera controls. Uh, you have to press B here. And drop down again by the looks of it. Oh, you can actually shimmy. What was I saying about... I'm not respecting the game enough. Oh yeah, tropes. And so it's, it's predictable, but in the best case, that's, it's intentionally predictable because it's trying to be awesome. And every time it delivers on the predict about, it predicts it predictability is just kind of like yeah that's what i assume pacific Rim is like i do know there's an anime called like uh, uh my hero academia which does that i'm not a huge huge fan of anime i consider it a very low f bar of entertainment but you know that's just me <laughs> that's that's just me climb up please Ooh, very close shadow them both And then shadow this guy. It seems they begin glowing once you get near to them. Oh, I got three out of four, so there must be like a hidden one. Over there. How am I going to do this, I wonder? So yeah, if, if something is predictable, I think it's bad. Greg Kasavin, I'm pretty sure, wrote a blog post on that, on that concept. Of has, having something predictable... 
it makes it not not strictly worse, but not as good. I, I guess if I shout at it while it's here, I can shout at it while. Oh hey, it has area of effect. That's neat, and you can shout at it just while simply moving it. Oh, there was the fourth. You know, I, could, I probably could have made it without using this thing, but no, whatever the case, I'm I'm going to use it anyways. Let's see what the range is. Does it hit everything all at once? It does! Glorious. Let's move along. This does remind me of Hob. Hob was admittedly a game which I gave initially a very positive review of. Now that I've played through it and had a chance to think back on it and think back on it critically, I find that it was a game that... Wow, there's coyote time in this game. Coyote time being when you run off a ledge, uh, you can still press A and jump a few frames after you've dropped. And that's, it's a very important thing for, uh, for game feel. Because oftentimes you've probably played a platformer before, a 2D platformer where you would swear like, I, I, I jumped, I jumped, why didn't I jump? Why did I fall? I jumped, I hit the A button. And it turns out it's because that game doesn't have coyote time. It doesn't have that option. I guess I'm gonna have to move the baby dolls into position somewhere, somehow. I keep losing my train of thought. This is, <laughs> this is frustrating. And I haven't made, I haven't cracked a single joke. It's just been a very conversational thing. Oh, well, then again, that is the kind of thing I'm trying to go for. I'm trying to be conversational more than anything. Quick, 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 quick. I didn't realize before time, before time's up. Shout, Fosro da. Did I just get it? Yeah, I did. Sick. Cool. Good to know. I guess I'll climb up there then. Uh, once I review what was over here. You know, since those are facing the opposite direction, I reckon I have to approach from that domed building over there. Okay, yeah, I've, I've only been really conversational, but then again, that is the kind of style I'm trying to achieve. I am trying to be <clears throat> more of a conversationalist, somebody who can who can talk to someone seriously. I wish I could crack good jokes. <laughs> I wish I could crack good jokes. My, my, com my humor tends to be more of a self-deprecating style, but also something that straddles offensiveness at times. So I will poke fun at other people in good just I mean I'm not I, I assure you I'm not some I'm not one of those guys who can't who gives that shit and they can't take it himself I promise you I'm not like that frankly I like it when someone can give me shit <laughs> I find it very entertaining uh hold on see I wish the camera wasn't this angle am I meant to be going down or up this is I, I, I don't know, and I, I wish I could look around. I'm... Yeah, just 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 drop or something. Leave, forget about it. Let me out. I'll be honest. I am just a little bit lost, but only a little bit. I also do like birds in video games. I like birds because they're just ex like I said in Fire and Sales. They extend the 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 scope. As in the, the physical range of the game. Because there's a sky, and having birds flying up to the sky is really cool. And speaking of sky... Uh, I was going to start talking about Bastion and then the sky, but maybe not. Maybe that should be a game you play for yourself. You know, this is very lucky that I'm so close to the end of the episode, because it means I can... You're kidding. I can just keep... Can I jump or something? Can I drop? Can I shimmy? Can I drop? I can drop, <laughs> though it's not a happy ending. Uh, at this point, I think this is a good opportunity to end the episode. It gives me a chance to look around, actually, and get my bearings. So hey, thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate your viewership. Stay tuned. Going to be a lot more rhyme coming in future. Yeah. I hope, hope to see you then. Bye. See ya.